Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a temporary enclosure. Now a temporary enclosure is not a permanent house, but it is good for the time being. So this is very good for people who rescue reptiles or anything like that, or people who are starting to rescue reptiles. You might want a temporary enclosure and it's not a, it's not a full enclosure, but say you just got something and someone's like, I'm going to get rid of this ball python here, take it. And you're like, whoa, I don't know where I'm throwing on you. Bam, right there. You can make a temporary enclosure for the time being until a store opens up the next day or something like that. You don't want to, if you go to sleep, you don't want to just leave, leave a ball python there because a lot of times people will just come with the animal like that. Um, they don't usually, people don't usually like to give away the enclosure. They'll give away the animal, but go sell the enclosure. So in that case, if an appropriate size enclosure is sold out or you just can't find one for the time being, or maybe it's coming in a couple days because it's shipping, this is a perfect solution. I like to use plastic storage tubs like this. They have a locking lid. This is actually an enclosure I use for my roaches. You can also just use these as roach enclosures or insect enclosures or isopod enclosures. So not only as a temporary enclosure, but as an actual enclosure for insects. But I like to use stuff like this. Also, you can get like huge totes, like this 55 gallon tough tote is only $40 on sale at Home Depot. They have clear ones as well. I just took a picture of this one because it was right in front of me. They have clear ones. I always get clear for my animals. For this today's video, I'm gonna be using this one right here. This is a 27 gallon enclosure or plastic tote, forgive me, it's a little storage bin. But I like to get these right here. And as you can tell, I'm drilling holes. And this is how we're gonna start off. You're gonna get the lid. Now you don't need a drill for this. There's another method. You could just heat up a knife and just poke holes that way. If you don't have a drill, I have a drill. If you use a drill, do it very slowly and carefully. You can crack the lids, they're very cheap. So be very careful about that. Now, depending on what type of lizard you have, that's really depends on if you want, you're gonna cut the entire top off or you're gonna go ahead and just drill holes like I am right now. I'm gonna be drilling air holes in the top of this to show you, like say if you had something that needs a lot of humidity, like a crested gecko or a ball python or something like that, you can drill a bunch of air holes in the top and you don't have to cut out the top, but you will have to drill air holes on the side as well. For a top like this, if you had like a ball python, I'd probably drill like 16 pretty good size air holes along the top of this. But say you have a leopard gecko, doesn't need much humidity and you need heat lamps. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the top of this and we're gonna use that dr the hole I drilled for a saw to cut it open. Right here, I have a little hacksaw and as you can tell, I'm just going along the top of it and just cutting it off. And you're just gonna do this all the way around until you cut the top out of the lid like this. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is on the lid as well, I'm gonna drill holes really close to the edge that I just cut off. And you're gonna use these as zip ties for the screen. You're gonna go all the way around. Then I like to drill in more air holes on the side just under where the lid goes. As you can see right here, I'm just drilling them maybe like two inches apart all around the sides. Once you got all the holes drilled in the top of the lid like this, you can go ahead and get your screen. I use hardware cloth, about one fourth inch uh, holes, and you can find this in garden sections, uh, tractor supply stores. And then I just go ahead and roll it out. And then you're just gonna cut it off like this right here. Just get a length that you need. And then you're just gonna get some zip ties. They sell them for like $3 at Walmart. I got some clear ones. And you're just gonna put it through the hole, through the screen, and just zip tie the screen to the top of the lid. It's very important that you put the screen on the outside like I'm doing here, because when you cut the screen, it can't have very sharp points, and you don't want the lizard rub it up against that, so that's why I put the screen on top of the lid, not inside of the lid. And then once you've got all the zip ties in place, you can go ahead and cut the extra screen off and the zip ties. And bam, it's done, just like that. You can add heat lamps on top of this, do whatever. You can add substrate, hides, everything. This is a complete temporary enclosure. Now you're probably wondering, like, what am I gonna do with this giant tote that I just got as a temporary enclosure? Well, you could use it again if you ever get another animal out of nowhere, just drop it on you. Or, this is what I like to use it for, you can use it for storage as well, but I like to use it as a plant grow out tank. I go ahead and put my plants in there that I want to grow out, and I just put them inside with no, nothing, no substrate or anything, and then I put an LED daylight bright, maybe a 75 watt to 100 watt equivalent on top of the lid, and you don't have to use the screen because it's good to keep the humidity in there. Um, so that's why I have this little lid right here just with the holes cut out on top just for extra ventilation. But I just, I use it as a grow out tank and it works wonders. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I set up a temporary tank for like a leopard gecko per se. So I do have a custom mix of substrate that I make myself and I just go ahead and toss it in here like so. Spread it around, get it evened out. Then I go ahead and add some rocks where the heat lamp is gonna be because leopard geckos love it when the heat hits that area. 
And then you can't forget the hides. I added some cork bark hides. And then we're gonna add a water bowl and a mealworm bowl. Last but not least, throw some lights on there. I got a heat lamp, UVB, and LED daylight to brighten the cage up. There you go. And this is how I would set up my temporary tank. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. I hope this is helpful in some way. If you have any questions, comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.